Today we're going to build a budget-friendly Moxon vise. So I'd like to thank Mike from Taylor Toolworks for supplying the hardware. This isn't sponsored, but he did provide the hardware for me to use in this project. Um, it's great hardware. I'll put links to everything that I use down in the description. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started building this. So for this project, I'm just using wood that I had already on hand. Didn't have enough stock to do both the front and back jaws with a thicker piece of material, but I did have this uh, three quarter inch material and I'm just cutting it in half. It just so happens to be 48 inches. Cutting it uh, in half gives me two 24 inch pieces. And you'll see me uh, getting just, uh, you know, the two or one face actually ready on each side, uh, just so that I have a good glue joint. And this will give me about an inch and a half uh, and then, you know, minus a little bit once I actually take it through the, uh, the planer to uh, get the dimensions uh, square. While the glue is drying on that piece, let's move over to getting this piece ready. So this is one of the larger pieces that I had, and this is going to be one of the jaws and then uh, the pieces for the, the tabletop. And all I'm going to do is just, uh, you know, cut this uh, down to the right length over at the miter saw and then break it down further at the band saw. So we decided to break this down into smaller pieces. Uh, these are about uh, two inches wide, I believe, or inch and a half, I think maybe it was. Uh, the reason I did it like this is so that uh, it less chances of a solid piece cupping, uh, where individual pieces, the way that I orient the grain, uh, they fight against each other and uh, you know it'll prevent it from uh, cupping over time. So I'm just going to take it over here to the, the planer in uh, the jointer and get each of the faces, uh, you know, uh, square to each other and then I'll do the glue up.
So it's now it's time to work on the jaws themselves. Uh, what I'm going to do here is get the, the face uh, flat and then I'll, I'll flip it on its side and get them uh, squared to each other. Then take it over to the planer and get uh, the two flat sides uh, parallel. And then I can use the table saw to uh, you know, cut it to the right width. And that's just the standard milling procedure that you see me doing here in just about all of my videos. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a little angle on the uh, front jaw and that's just so that when I'm doing like half line uh, dovetails uh, the saw doesn't go cut into the, the jaw. It's got that little angle to, to help that out. So I'm just going to lay out the uh, the holes. This is going to be in the front jaw, and in order to accommodate uh, maybe odd shaped uh, pieces that I want to clamp in the vise, I'm going to elongate this. So I find the center point, and then I go uh, a quarter inch on either side, and using that three quarter inch bit, I go in and uh, you know drill each side of that and then you'll see I come back with the chisel and clean that up and that just allows that vise to uh, you know be able to like I said accommodate those odd shaped pieces.
on the rear jaw, you're going to want to inset the, the nut. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm drilling a larger hole uh, first. Um, the depth of the nut itself, I believe this was a quarter in, uh, one and a quarter inch bit. And then I'll come back and drill all the way through with a three quarter inch bit using the tip of that larger bit uh, center as the, the guide for the three quarter inch bit. So we've got a little bit of a challenge here. Um, I went with four inches for the top here and just because of the way the bolt sits, um, when I put my top on here, it's just a little bit taller. Now that could have been cured if I would have not made this so thick, but I didn't know it at the time. Not a problem. I've got it marked here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mark how much higher this is and I'm just going to put a little bitty uh, gap here for as long as this bolt uh, the nut sticks out here and then it'll just lay on top of there like that so not a big deal it's just uh, kind of one of those one of those things that just don't uh, you don't see it uh, when you're doing it
Some of you may recognize this uh, piece of wood here. So this is the uh, leftover from making my son's uh, headboard. Uh, I'll put a link up in the corner here if you're interested in seeing that video. But I try not to throw anything away. I always try to incorporate scraps where I can into my projects. So I want to take an opportunity to uh, sand this uh, before I do the assembly. It just makes it a little bit easier now. And uh, you see the 240 there, but I actually never used it. I only went up to 180. It's, it's shop furniture, so it should be good. Um, for some of these uh, some harder to get places, this is just a, a piece of round HDPE that I have laying around. Uh, so I just wrapped the sandpaper around that to get into those grooves. And then I'm just, with that foam pad, I'm just breaking off the corners of the wood in the spots where it's not going to be clamped. Um, maybe that's not a big deal, but I thought that uh, a square edge where I'm clamping would be better. Uh, and then just blowing it off, and then I'm going to use a tack cloth to, to clean it up, uh, lay some tape down to try to prevent so much uh, squeeze out. So I'm going to use some some dowels uh, for the uh, the tabletop onto the jaws. But you know you can use biscuits, you can use dominoes, uh, you can use just about anything, and, or maybe nothing. Uh, it just helps with the alignment to make sure that I don't have to do too much cleanup um, to align that tabletop with the top of the jaw. And I wind up just using uh, five dowels, and that's plenty. So I'm going to use a dowel center jig here to put in some uh, some dowels to attach the tabletop to the rear jaw. You could use anything here from you know uh, biscuits, uh, dominoes, anything there. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I've got some of those center punch finders, um, so I'm going to line it up, uh, mark it, and then that'll give me the location I need to drill uh, the hole on the tabletop. Once I have that drilled, I'll take those out, put in the dowels, move the two to another place, mark those and so forth. And then that'll allow me to make sure that I got everything lined up and I don't have any misalignment when I go to glue this thing together.
So after the glue dried, I uh, took it out of the clamps, uh, did another light sanding, and then taking a tack cloth here to just to clean off the dust. And then it's just shop furniture, so all I'm going to do is just put a coat of boiled linseed oil on it. So the, the kit that they, they sent me uh, came with this uh, crubber. Uh, you can either use the crubber or leather, uh, and I'm just using some um, spray-on adhesive. I'm going to put it on both sides, uh, give it about five or ten minutes, and uh, let it get tacky, and then just uh, sit there and apply it, and it's almost an immediate connection, and then I'll come back and trim it, uh, the excess off with a, uh, a razor blade. So assembly is pretty easy. You're just going to thread on these uh, bolts and then uh, you know attach the nut and washer on the back side, run the uh, front jaw through, put the uh, clamps on, and we're done. And then we can take it out for a test drive. Alrighty, let's take this thing for a, uh, a test drive. As I said previously, you know, with the way that I elongated the holes, it allows you to put, you know, odd shaped pieces in here. The, uh, the pieces turn really easily, I, so I really like that. Uh, great hardware. I did hit them with some WD-40 just to uh, put a little grease on them and uh, to prevent rust, although not a big issue here in Arizona where it's so dry. But uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a test drive. So let's just clamp it up in here, put it somewhere close to the center. Okay, and with just a little bit of pressure, you saw I really, and I'm using everything I've got to uh, pull that out and there's not much pressure on it. So it holds it really well. I probably could actually go down a little bit further on this piece of wood. Okay, and you'll notice, like I said, I put that little bevel here just so that when I'm cutting half-blind dovetails, it doesn't eat into it. Um, if it's not a deep enough um, angle, I can go back and uh, you know cut that. So let's say I am, oh, I probably gotta go up a little bit here. There we go. Just so that my jig um, does that. So let's say that we're going to be cutting some pins on this. So let's, uh, you know, we can hold it here. And uh, let's see, we go here. And you see, it just clamps it, it makes it, uh, puts it a little bit higher so that, you know, you've got something to clamp it to. And, you know, it's a little harder to clamp to a bench. So that's kind of how you would use this. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for today. Again, I'd like to thank Mike over at Taylor Tool Works for uh, sending over this kit. Uh, if you're interested, check down in the description and I'll list all of the parts that I used uh, from uh, Taylor Tool Works. And again, I really appreciate you sticking around. I uh, like it if you liked it, uh, share it, uh, make a comment. All of those things help the channel out. And until next time, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you.